Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Huffin' Racing Radio. Uh, we've really sucked lately, and it's been a minute since we've recorded an episode, but we're here today. Myself, uh, your host, Landon Huffman, and sitting beside me is Who's Your Daddy himself, Seth Brothers and Seth. How we doing? Howdy. And sitting to his right is definitely not RJ, uh, if you haven't noticed already. It is the brand new unpaid shop foreman at Huffman Racing, Kenny Gut Man Little Gut. How we doing? Wonderful. Happy to have you here, Gut. Glad to be here. Uh, he delayed the recording today uh, so that he could walk back outside and get a hat for his bald head. So if anyone was wondering why we were late, that's why we were late. Had nothing to do with technical difficulties. I take full blame for everything. Yes, you do. A lot has happened since uh, we've talked last. Um, I think. when Did we talk to him after Kenley? Yeah, we did. No. Yeah, we did. Did we? Yeah, I think we had an episode. Me and you did it. Maybe. We talked to him after Kenley, but we have not spoke since the Orange County 15K and the Hickory Cars Tour race, which was this past weekend. So uh, we have a little bit to talk about, a little bit to catch everybody up on. Those of you that have been waiting on a podcast, I apologize. Life has really been really shitty lately. <laughs> a real kick in the nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Just a real shit bag of a day uh, every day for the last two months. Um, and I've really just not been able to find time to do this. Uh, also, it's like herding sheep to try to get people here just to do the, the, the podcast. But today, it is not the case because we are here in present. Uh, but, you know, typically if the sheep don't herd, it's the shepherd's fault. I'm not disagreeing. The shepherd has had some issues lately as well, Men- mentally and otherwise. Chasing squirrels. Yes. Um, no, I have had a lot on my plate. Uh, we've been we've been running like a bucket of ass, so that hasn't helped. And uh, I've been working on race cars with Gut Man during the day, trying to edit videos and do all the other stuff that goes along with what I'm trying to do for a living, which I don't recommend. Um, <laughs> yeah. You call uh, that making a living? Well, I'm I'm surviving. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say making a living. If I wouldn't have my wife, I'd really be screwed. Um, Seth, you made a lot of money in a fishing tournament the other day, right? Oh no! Oh <laughs> damn! I, well, you skipped a race to go fishing. Did I? I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Orange County. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did. Skipped Orange County to go. Well, you didn't fish. Telepathy. You didn't fish on uh, that Friday. You chose. You said that well, you I just had to get up at, early on Saturday. You get up early every day. Yeah, but you know, I need a good rest. Get mentally focused. How did All that right. work out? Um. Well, I didn't finish last. I guess y'all didn't finish last either. Y'all were next to <laughs> we, last. We were close. But, yeah, we were second to last. <laughs> well, if you didn't finish last, where did you finish? Forty first out of one hundred fifty three. And you got zero, nothing. They paid twenty one spots. That ain't worth a dang, man. I did something cool today. What? I signed diecast cars. Did you? First time in my life. Yep. All, all out in front of me. It was like 90 of them, and I signed every one of them. How long did it take? I'm not going to lie, though. I apologize to one individual who's going to get one of those autograph cars because I kind of fudged up the autograph. <laughs> I seen it, and then I just kept going act like it didn't happen, but one of those autographs is real dog shit. That means I'm it'll sorry. be worth a lot of money because it's yeah. different. Well, it depends on how you look at it, but I did, I did fudge one pretty hard. Um, hopefully they're not angry because it happens to the best of us. Well, maybe they'll get lucky and they'll have a good number uh, on the car and a the, VIN number. Yeah, a good VIN number. Yeah, uh, for those of you that pre-ordered a diecast, they are shipping from Lionel. I signed a bunch of them for Circle B diecast today. That's pretty cool. Uh, definitely something that I never thought I would be able to say is that I've got diecast cars of a late mile stock car that we own, um, and they're actually produced by Lionel. So. That's pretty badass. 11-year-old me would be geeking out. 28-year-old me is also geeking out. But seeing them all lined up and signing them was pretty surreal. But uh, thank you to High Rock Vodka and everybody that supports what we do that made it possible for us to have a die-cast car. Um, yeah, but th- those of you that pre-ordered, you will be getting your car hopefully this week or within the next week and a half. So be on the lookout for those. And uh, if you get the VIN number 75, 075, it's going to be worth a lot of money, so I would recommend reselling it and then buying one off my website. Because I do have 40 
diecast cars that I also bought to sell on our merchandise trailer. So if you pre if you didn't pre-order one and uh, you still want one, they'll be available at grassrootsglobal.shop. How fast do you think those will go, Gut? Uh, hopefully pretty pretty fast. Hopefully. I think faster than we've ran this season, probably. That wouldn't take much. <laughs> no. I do think they'll sell quick, though. I've had a lot of people ask about them. Oh, Block A, photographer Block A. He's been he's wanting to buy like two or three of them. Price goes up for him. Yeah, well, he yeah he charges me for t shirt or for uh, pictures, so I'm gonna double charge him for the diecast. He car. also delivers me the wrong shit. Yeah, what national day is it? It is National Unicorn Day. So, do you believe in unicorns? I've personally never seen one. Do you think there's a possibility that they could be out there? Uh, there's a possibility anything could be out there. Do you believe in a unicorn gut? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't? No. But how do they know that they're not a real thing? Like, do you believe in Sasquatch? Myself, yeah. yeah. Of course. So you believe in Sasquatch, but you don't believe in a unicorn? I've seen Sasquatch on TV. It used to do the TV commercials. I've seen unicorns on TV. Have you ever watched Game of Thrones? No. No. Well, they don't have unicorns, but yeah. there's there's some dragons and stuff in there. I do believe in unicorn race cars. Please tell. You don't know what that is? No, I do not. That car I drove for Nelson was a unicorn. Would you like for me to elaborate? Please Please do. Oh, okay, okay. Usually uh, you could build 10 different race cars or 10 identical race cars, and you'll have one that's just better than all the other ones. That's a unicorn car. Pretty confident that that Reynolds car was a uh, unicorn car for Nelson. It's still the only car they're racing and they're running up front with. And uh, it drove really good. I don't think I... I've only ran bad in it one time. We're still searching for our unicorn. Um, we don't have one right now, I don't think. Uh, I do have... This is my second Venom Energy today, by the way. When did you switch it up? Well, I just... Times are tough. <laughs> you got to go cheaper? Times are tough, and i seen the 99 cent oh. label on this thing. And I ain't seen a 99 cent energy drink for a while. Um... So my heart could explode, but Venom Energy, 99 cent, zero sugar. You know what's also 99 cent or two for two at what? the gas station in the same size can and tastes way better? Bush Light. Yes, but I can't drink Bush Light while I'm driving legally. Uh, legalities. Oh. It's a law. It is. I can't confirm. But you're not driving right now. No. But my wife's not home from work yet, so if I'm drinking one of those before she gets home, it could end badly for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a lot to talk about today. Um, we're going to go over, like I said, Cars Tour at Hickory and uh, our first trip to Orange County for the 15000 to win race. Also, break down New River, which is where we go this weekend for the Cars Tour. We've got a, we've got a pretty crappy stretch here coming up. I guess it could be really good if if we run good, but if we don't run any better, it's going to be real bad. We got three races in a row, back-to-back weekends from the Cars Tour. Let's get three Ws. You are very optimistic, Gut. If nothing else, I am optimistic. Yeah, you are. How about three top tens? That would be like three Ws. Okay, let's go with the top tens then. I'm still going to want the W. And then we have a Wilkesboro test right after that. The Tuesday or Wednesday after, we got to go to Wilkesboro. Yeah. So, we're going to break everything down, and uh, I guess this is the only place you can hear it from on Huffin' Racing Radio. So, thank you guys for <laughs> tuning in, and we're going to go ahead and jump right into this episode. <laughs> Two weeks ago, we traveled to Orange County Speedway for the first ever time Huffin' Racing has taken a vehicle there, uh, at least a late model stock car. I think... I think Big Rob won a dash race there at some point in time, but I've never been there until last Friday. So it's the first time I'd made laps around the track, and we also had a, a new vehicle to Huffman Racing, a new race car for us that we got this off season. Her name is Jasmine. I really like Jasmine. What do you think, Seth? I don't know her very well. Oh, well, hopefully you get to know her pretty well. I've only had one weekend with her, but I really liked her. Yep. What do you think, Gut? 
I think she kicked my ass twice in the same day. She blacked both of my eyes <laughs> in the shop, so uh, yeah, I, I wasn't a fan for a while, but yeah, I, I think I'm more like bitch. her. Yeah, there was some domestic violence going yeah. on in our shop, and Gut was the victim. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't have had my hands on her undercarriage. Nope, you should not have. First time that we've ever had a car that was built, Just I guess, decade. yeah, I guess in within two years of... <laughs> of the car hitting the racetrack. Um, it is a 2023 PRW car that we got from Carroll Speed Shop. And we put a lot of work into it this off season, got it ready to rock and roll. We had a brand new fresh engine from Ravon Clark and Clark's Automotive. So um, first time on the racetrack with it. And, you know, with everything that transpired at the track, we didn't, we weren't able to get the race car to Hickory to test before we went. So the first time on the track with that car was practice on Friday, and it was a one-day show. And uh, we hit the racetrack for the whole first practice. So pretty much we only had one full practice to tune on the car. Ended up qualifying 10th, pretty solid field, 23 cars, basically 20 cars tour cars, and we qualified right in the middle. So I was pretty proud of that, and we actually ran pretty well in the race, saving our tires, and then, of course, uh, something happened like it has all year, and uh, I reused fuel cell foam that we had in the car last year, and it rotted and filled the fuel filter. And I will say that our shop foreman, Guts, told me not to use it. Yeah, that's what I heard. Well, you questioned it. I, I did question it. There was uh, when we were getting ready to put it in the car, we did find some some small pieces of uh, fuel fit fuel cell foam and so we cleaned it out the best we could uh and it just progressively got worse you know what's crazy about that we ran 50 laps of practice qualified 80 laps in the race no problem and then it just decided it was going to screw up i think probably what happened is since we were getting at the very bottom of the fuel cell we was running low on fuel and i think it started picking up whatever was on the bottom of the can and it was probably some residue down there, and that's probably when it picked it up. At the halfway break, we should have, if we would have taken the filter apart and blew the filter out, it might have stayed out of the line long enough to run the second half of the race. It's possible. Because it would have been full of fuel again. Yeah. But, oh well, didn't really matter. We didn't finish the race, um, but at least we found our issue and can correct that moving forward. And then this past weekend, we were at Hickory Motor Speedway. It was a home race for us. You know, really showed out in front of the home crowd, boys. Oh, yeah. Real proud of the effort. We uh, we ran 15th, you know. Also, Coco is the devil. I'm convinced. <laughs> so far. She has been one evil bitch. Excuse my language. Sorry for cussing. Yeah. Family show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we ran 15th. We struggled really all weekend. We still not got a grasp on this new race car uh, for Jimmy Mooring Racing. Our 37 machine is, has been off, but we've been making progress. I mean, I will say 15th is better than DNQ and, and driving across the front stretch during an autograph session, having to wave to the crowd, tell everybody bye. Yeah. Because that was pretty freaking embarrassing. Yeah. The only thing about Hickory, we could have been at Pocket sooner. Yeah, well, the Pro Late Model race was an eternity oh, long. Was, oh, my God. And race control in the Cars Tour race was terrible, too, in the late-mile stock race. I don't know what the hell they were smoking. <laughs> Something strong. I mean, they had... At one point, they said, we were the lucky dog, and we ain't seen the leader all damn night. <laughs> Forward or backwards. <laughs> no, we're even close. Yeah, 37 lucky dog. I said, I don't even know who the hell's leading the race. <laughs> Having all night. Yeah, they... I don't know. <sighs> Seems like we always have problems like that. And then, during the race, they... You know, we took fuel when we pitted, not because we pitted for strategy purposes. We pitted because we sucked, and we were we thought we had a vibration, so we were working on that, and we ended up taking fuel, too, but then they allowed everybody to come down for fuel and didn't let people stay out. I wanted to start my damn yeah, we my wanted piece to be up a damn front. Roadblock. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to see how long it took them to get around Mix my Mix it ass. up a little bit. you damn right. That would have been interesting. That would have yeah. put on a show for We'd the fans. We'd probably been double hooked. It's yeah. very possible. Yeah, because the way you were all over the track, <laughs> yeah, they had a hell of a time trying to get around you. That's right. <laughs> Flying sideways in the way and ready to get run over. Oh, well, we did uh, We did survive. 
no major damage and as bad as the whole weekend was that was the best i've finished at hickory in a cars tour race since 2016 2017 we finished fifth in 17 what car was that that was a torp car it was a torp car yeah qualified i think we ran fifth and then like 11th or 12th in the second race um because that was when they did that stupid twin deal remember that car store ran twins in the same night because alfredo won both of them i think i do recall yeah they were trying to do they did it there in dominion where they ran twin races it was very very odd it was it like twin 100 or something yeah but we did run fifth in the first one so i mean that was you know it's crazy because i felt like from what i recall from back then i felt like we sucked that night and we finished fifth like the car sucked that bad but that shows you how tough the series is now because now if you run fifth you freaking well, like you feel accomplished how far off the pole are we a tenth and a half and we qualified 24th yeah that's absurd a tenth and a half on a weekly show would put you about fourth yeah we uh we changed rear ends at the track we did yeah we took the rear end out of jasmine dad came home with jameson and uh took the rear end out brought it back to hickory we put it in right before qualifying and it didn't make a damn difference (laughs) not a freaking difference whatsoever so at least we know that what we thought might have been a continued issue was not a problem i mean the rear end was fixed and we didn't have to deal with that moving forward so put put the new rear end back in it and see what else we can find there's always next week, I guess. We got a new river this weekend, a track that I, you know, was really stellar at last year as well. <laughs> <laughs> so the odds are really in our favor going into New River. Also, well, the another side was it like twenty cars on the entry list. You'll get a top twenty. Yeah. I think there are probably a few more. We get the race against June Bug. He's racing this weeekend. I bet you won't wreck him. Probably not because he'll probably be in front of me. I don't know. Maybe not. We're gonna get our stuff figured out. Yeah. And that, that place you ride around half throttle, so I could at least make sure I'm around him at some point. Yeah. Everybody else's half throttle was your full throttle? Yeah. Might just go get that halfway bonus and then park. Yeah. $500 the halfway bonus. You then, could drive to the front for once just so everybody could see you on TV. Hell yeah, and then when everybody says, when they all start blowing back by me in that last stage, I'll just pull in and tell everybody we had a mechanical problem. Yeah. Yep. There you go. And it'd be believable. Yeah, we overheated. <laughs> overheated and... Uh, tough hate it for the boys hate it for everybody on this 37 machine but man we had a rocket ship tonight (laughs) (laughs) oh god uh i do have i do have one one real worry about this weekend we ain't got no freaking help (laughs) my dad's not going seth ain't going bubba's not going um rich rich ain't going danny can't go it's literally me and Gutman. might be time to dial up old astro I tried last night. Oh, he said yeah. no. Yep. He bailed on me too. So if anybody out there is wanting to go work uh, at New River All-American Speedway this weekend, we need the help, and it does not pay anything. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and you should emphasize the word work. Yes. It, you will work. Please no standing around. Do y'all think my heart could explode by drinking two of these in a set? Like within – I drank it at uh, 830 this morning. No, nah, you're good. You'll probably be fine. It's only got 160 milligrams of caffeine, but I don't know. Do you feel funny? No, I just okay, was are good. Yeah, I was just wondering. If you feel if you file face first onto the table, we'll keep going. Don't worry. 99 cent energy drink. Never know. Yeah, it's questionable. Never know. Uh, New River is a pretty cool track, but I struggled there. Hopefully, all the fans come out. For those of you that uh, don't know, uh, the Cars Tour. Only goes to New River once a year out Jacksonville, North Carolina. It's the old Coastal Plain Speedway, uh, Goodyear All American, New River All American Coastal something. Um, but that's where we went last year, uh, and the year before I think the tour went there. <clears throat> but it's most it's recently been renovated, uh, but the asphalt itself is very old and very worn out. So the race will definitely be a strategy race. You think it's worse than Myrtle Beach as far I as think, tire wear? Yeah, I think so. It's bad. And, you know, that's one reason why they went to the ST2 tire this year was to hopefully help tire wear at places like that. But it's not going to change anything. Everybody's still going to go half throttle, and then when it's time to go, the good cars are going to go, and the bad cars are still going to suck, just like last year. If they really wanted to provide a solution for that, they should have said it's a six-tire race. 
you can take two tires at any caution. So anytime you want to come down, because you can't lose laps under caution. So at any point in time, if you want to come down and take two tires, you can come down and take your two tires. But there's no mandatory well, stop. Well, you look like Morgan Shepard out there changing your own tires. Well, that is, you know, that would run me into the other issue that I have no help. But I do think that if they would have done that, you know, given that you can't lose or gain, like if you come down pit road and take tires, then, well, I guess you would ha- you would be able to gain or lose spots on pit road. Because if you, if you get off pit road before somebody else that took tires, then you're going to beat them. But either way, I mean, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. You'd have a lot of people come down at different times, um, and it would play into some strategy because you know you're going to get the 40 lap. You know, every 40 laps, you know you're going to get a caution. So at lap 80, when there's 65 laps to go, do you take that risk at, of taking your tires there, or do you try to wait and catch a yellow and put them on with like 25 to go? So it would have added like a wrinkle into everything. I think it would have made the race more interesting. We don't have that. We've got four tire race and it's going to suck. Yep. Gut, I have a question. Go. Go ahead. Go. Go. Go for it. How has your last month at Huffman Racing been? It's honest answer. Honest, uh, it has sucked. <laughs> Damn. I've, I, I've, had a, I've had a lot of fun. I've worked my ass off and, uh, it's just it, it's been frustrating that we've as hard as we've worked we've worked hard this season and we've just not had the results to show for it and uh but uh we're making gains but i'm having fun with it but it is it's work it's it's fun but it's not fun it's not fun when you don't run good and i think it's frustrating but this is this is how screwed up racing is it, this is how much of a drug it is as bad as last weekend was, it was total shit. Like, we, we were miserable the whole weekend because we felt like we was running bad. We struggled in the race. I had to race my freaking donkey dick off to finish 15th, okay? Get out of the car. want to kick the side in. want to stomp on the freaking hood. Go up and throw my helmet in the trailer and quit. Then on Monday, I'm already, or Sunday, I'm already excited to go back to the racetrack because you have another race weekend. When in reality, like, well, that's insane to me because racing is so frustrating, but it is 1,000% a drug. Except unless you're Seth. He just doesn't like going in general anyways. I just know how to fight addiction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something I've learned well, in I my don't. older years. I don't. Racing is 1,000% a drug. I mean, look at Kenny. We drug his ass back into racing. He was retired. Yeah. Do you regret it yet? No, not yet. I, I'm working on it, though. <laughs> He's getting there, uh, slowly. You, you think about it, though, like we had Fan Fest there before the race Saturday, and mm-hmm. all those fans and stuff come down there wanting to meet all of us, see the cars, meet the drivers and teams, things like that. Think about how many of those people would trade places with us in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. They would love to do it. They'd love to just get that their foot in the door and be able to do it. Yeah. And so I, I try to remember when I'm, we're having a bad day and things really suck, there's somebody that would love to be doing it. And so – we're getting to do something that most of the time is fun and you know it, it is work we put in a lot of effort and stuff and it is frustrating when things go south but we're still getting to do something that is a hell of a lot of fun and most people would trade places with us in a heartbeat yeah i mean <clears throat> see that's the kind of inspiration i need to come around well it's been here for the last month where the hell you that's been the most inspirational thing i've ever heard gutman say He's full of shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> he is. I mean, I uh, I agree. I just, I feel like sometimes it's easy to lose, you know, lose the a grasp on why we do it. And it's easy to think about, you know, like into last year we had success. I had success in the Cars Tour, you know. <clears throat> I knew taking this deal on was going to be more work and harder but i fully expected to run as good or better than i did last year and i still feel like we can and i'm confident that we can but things just haven't went our way and it's really easy to get aggravated about that because you know you're only as good as your last race so you have that kind of looming in your head and then i feel like i'm doing a lot of extra work too that i wasn't doing last year and we ain't got nothing to show for it really but you know, we, we have a good run this weekend, and then that whole uh, mindset changes. So, 
just one week to the next, really. Like I said, you're only as good as your last race. Right now, we ain't very good. <laughs> well, now we can always go up. That's that's the good thing about it. When you're when you're at the bottom, you're going to go up. So we're not going sideways. We're going up. Yeah, that's true. I'm excited. Uh, do we? I don't even know if we have any reviews. I I don't even think I can't check. You gotta your reviews. do podcast before you can get reviews. Well, I know, but I don't I don't have my phone. Yeah, well, so you're I gonna don't have to check use on that. Apple Podcasts. This past weekend. Uh, and RJ's not here to defend himself, so we're basically just going to... And that makes this more fun. Yeah, we're just going to um, analyze the situation and what happened. Um, I will also, for the YouTube uh, people watching this, um, the YouTube VOD, I will uh, include this clip that we're going to be discussing uh, now. So, <clears throat> this clip that's in question is from Saturday night during the Cars Tour late mile stock race. We were on pit road working on our race car. And this was all during a caution where Connor Jones had been wrecked by Jacob Hebner on the front stretch. Connor had got out of his car, and the field was stopped red flagged on the back stretch. And Connor ran from where his car was at all the way through the pits, past our car, onto the back stretch, and was yelling at Hebner through the fence. So that's kind of the setup for this. And the video is Connor walking back from the fence back to his hauler with his family. And just for a side note to the backstory, RJ was not at the track with us this weekend. He was there with one of his iRacing friends, Cody Dempster. Cody Dempster Racing, which is also uh, a full-time Cars Tour competitor this year on Lake Mile Stock side of things. <clears throat> so RJ was with him. So RJ was standing on the backstretch. And, uh, you know, as most of you know, RJ's got a mouth on him. He's very vocal Yep. when it comes to his opinion. He's very vocal. And I think that sometimes he forgets that he weighs 90 pounds and he's not behind a computer <laughs> screen. Because in this clip, you will hear RJ, and you'll know it's RJ. Trust me, if you listen to this podcast, you will know. He starts uh, running his mouth at Connor uh, while Connor's walking by. And... Um, continues to run his mouth until both Connor, the mom, and the dad turn around and basically threaten to beat the shit out of RJ. <laughs> and when that happens, allegedly, RJ then denies even saying anything whatsoever. Completely denies the fact <laughs> that he remotely said any word to any of them, any three of them, Connor, anybody. <laughs> and, uh... So I'm going to go ahead and... Gut hasn't seen the video, so we're going to play it real quick. So I'm going to let Seth play it on his phone real fast. Oh, I know. You came down pit road because you felt a vibration. Yes. So we are looking for a vibration, and I turn around, and I see hands on RJ. He was about to get the old, the old ass whooped. Hmm. Huh. Guts watching the video right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 what did he say? Hold on. <laughs> What's his deal? I didn't say nothing to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, now. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> so, <clears throat> I hate RJ's not here. Maybe we'll have to uh, have him send a video response. Um, That'd be good. Yeah, that'd a video be, response. A idea. You know, basically responding to the alleged uh, video here. Did RJ say anything? That's the real question. Did RJ start it? Well, he's saying he didn't say anything. The jury's out. The jury's still out. 
do you think he said anything good? I uh, heard a few things that sounded like his voice. <laughs> yeah. The, uh... <laughs> the... Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> now that, that is pretty, uh... It's pretty strong evidence, I will say. Yeah. And I missed out on all this action because we're actually trying to figure out what's wrong with the car. And yeah. I miss all of this. But Dang. honestly, this is the first time in the 15 years that I've known RJ that... He's got caught saying He something? got caught yeah. talking shit and almost got his ass beat. <laughs> yeah. Like, genuinely almost got his shit rocked. And and that's the first time that I've, I've also, outside of him and Flynn, him and Flynn got in the fight at Florence. And I felt like there was some fear there. But this time, in that video, there is strong fear in RJ's eyes, I feel like. Like, immediate regret. He, as soon as they turned around, he knew that he fucked up. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. He said, oh, I didn't even say nothing. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, RJ, for the for the fantastic clip. But I just, I'm just curious to know what RJ thinks. Like, he, he, we had a text conversation back and forth with RJ, and he, he insinuated that he did not start it. I'm not sure because it was over text. He could have been being sarcastic. Was this video fake news? It was it fake. I don't know. I'm not sure RJ knew the video was out. Was it fabricated? Well, that's Did someone voice over RJ's voice? I'm just. Uh, Is it a setup? I'm really glad that somebody got it on camera because I'm gonna make an Instagram reel out of that <laughs> and and a uh, and a TikTok and it's going on Twitter. Or X, and uh, we'll see what RJ has to say. So, um, as far as I know, RJ's uh, alive and well today. No, uh, you know, no fight after the racetrack or anything like that. We have spoken to him after he left, so we know that he didn't get jumped in the parking lot or anything like that. But yeah, quite the theatrics there at uh, at Hickory Motor Speedway during uh, Red Flag. Um, but I believe that's going to do it for today's episode. We're going to try to be more consistent. I know I said that every other time that we've done this, but truly we are going to be. We're racing pretty much every weekend now, so we'll have content <clears throat> flowing in um, from our race weekends and, and the things that happen at the racetrack to us on a, a week-in, week-out basis. But um, thank you guys so much for sticking with us and, and you know waiting on these podcasts and also, tune in every time we do post one, both on YouTube and the audio versions. Uh, speaking of YouTube, if you're on, if you're watching, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Try to be more frequent here. Uh, maybe I think I'm gonna go fishing with Seth here in the next little bit. So I've got some mics. I'm gonna mic myself up and mic Seth up, and that could I'm, be dangerous. I'm gonna catch me a hog. Catch a hog. Big old fat juicy hog. Uh. Ain't that what they call them? Get me a, catch me a hog. Is that what hog they're called? Tank. Tank. Big little summer tank. Growing. Ain't that what you call them? You can call them a lot of things. Sometimes Big summer tank. Fat bitch. I mean, just. Dang. Pants. Well, I can't do that. I'm married. I mean, I looked up there yesterday and I saw one. I said, oh, that's a fat bitch. Then a crackhead in a canoe came by and totally threw off my focus. You let me know when we can go fishing. Maybe Gut can go too. I'll wild though. Can three people fit on your boat? It's tight. Gut can Look, sit down the whole time. I run, <laughs> I run a smoldering thirty-five miles an hour by myself. So we get three on there, and oh, we may not her. get on plane. Did you watch the eclipse yesterday? I looked at it. Yeah. So I was fishing, and I was up shallow looking, and it it screwed my eyeballs bad. Well, you're was, not supposed it, to look at the sun. I, was, I wasn't looking at the sun. I'm saying the light, how the light changed while it was happening. I couldn't see shit just looking at the bank. Mm. Did you look? Did you look at it good? No, I, it's cloudy here. Whenever we, for most of it, and so I, I never even bothered. You're gonna have to wait another forty years. How long is it? Twenty years? Twenty five. Hell, I ain't gonna live long enough to see the next one. Well, I did see it yesterday. Robert was standing outside looking at it with, uh, with his bare ass eyes. No, with badass. a with a welder helmet. <laughs> yeah, so I got to see that, but. Uh, if you're listening on the audio platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, and all those good places to listen to this 
content that we put out for you. Make sure you drop a review uh, on Apple Podcasts. You can leave a text review on Spotify. Uh, you can give us five stars on both of them. And uh, we do try to read the reviews here, even though, I don't know, we might have a review now. My phone died, so I can't look at any other reviews. That was also our second camera, so I apologize for that. But other than that, uh, we got New River this weekend. Cars Tour will be live on Flow at, I believe, 7 Eastern on Saturday night. And then next weekend, we'll be at Orange County Speedway, uh, which will also be on Flow Cars Tour. So make sure you chill on the 37, and uh, I guess whoever makes it to the racetrack with me and Gut, and uh, we'll be talking to you guys next week. Y'all got anything else to add? No, sir. Thank you, uh, Guts, for coming on board. Might be a, a new permanent co-host. We'll see. No, yeah, we'll see. Just let me know. It doesn't. You know where to find good. me. Don't pay very good, but. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. We'll uh, we'll see you guys next week.